If you want to support the channel then please check out my Patreon page to gain access to exclusive videos, take part in Q&As and watch my retrospectives before they go live on YouTube. Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here, back with a new commentary, and today Stuart Ashton is joining me. Hello, how are you doing sir? I'm doing very well, doing very well. Uh, are you looking forward to discussing the 1982 classic Tron? Oh, I haven't seen Tron for a while, so this was, well, it was a good excuse to watch Tron, frankly, so <laughs> well up for that. <laughs> I've had quite a lot of requests to, uh, to, do, to cover this movie, um, I reviewed it years ago, um, and I had to re-upload it because of all the old beauty of copyright claims on, on music anything uh, associated with Tron and its music, especially the sequel is always a bit of a bugger to get around but anyway, we're here to do a commentary on Tron, so if you wish to sync this commentary with your own copy of the film, put the timestamp to zero and press play now now I saw this what, must have been it would have been late 80s as a kid on TV it's not, uh, I, was far too, I, was, I was born when the film came out, probably the best year of cinema I'd say 1982. Uh, they knew you were coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would have been something I saw on ITV. And just, um, I was always kind of wowed by the look of it, but it never quite got me um, that interested in it. I thought it was quite a dull movie as a kid, but I appreciated it more over it's, the years. It's one of those, I didn't see this until like probably the 90s when I got like a, in fact, I think it may have even been a DVD because I realised I'd mm. never seen it. Yeah, because um, I remember this. This was a big thing at the time. I remember it being all over the media, and it's a lot of arcade culture. Which even as a six-year-old, which I wasn't, it came out. I was very interested in the video games. So the whole aesthetic, and that was very, um, very much something I was interested in. But yeah, didn't see it until years and years later. It's, it. I suppose it's, it's. It's at the time it was tapping into something that was contemporary, and it was gaming had. Sort of taking o had taken over, hasn't it? Since what late seventies, with things like Pong and, and Pac Man had kicked in early eighties, wasn't it? Pac Man. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Disney at the time were sort of struggling with their identity and what you know, and people th saw them as just making kiddie movies, animated movies had, and obviously they saw had this huge slump where animation wasn't bringing in the money anymore. And it was their Disney World and things like that that was doing the big business. And also making this leap to to film. They've done those Herbie movies, I believe. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realise those. Yeah, those must be Disney because they're on Disney Plus, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. that's right. And, Mind um, you, they've bought every other company in the world now. But, you know. <laughs> but Tron seemed like the right thing for Disney, wasn't it? You couldn't see it as a Warner Brothers or a, a 20th Century Fox movie. A Disney movie would seem quite apt. This makes certainly makes more, much more sense than... The Black Hole. Oh God! Yeah, that was that was a weird thing. That's on Disney Plus as well. I think I still need to watch. Actually, I've seen bits of it, but it's always oh, you know, oh yeah, that's something we should maybe do a commentary on in the future. That's a that's a fascinating film. Yeah, I think I think made by people who are slightly out of touch with what was quite cool at the time. I think <sighs> one of the big problems with it is um, uh, they didn't know how to end it, which is so yes, painfully obvious when you that. watch it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, with obviously Disney were kind of were, were pitched this idea by uh, Stephen uh, Lisberger, who had come from advertising and um, done yeah. commercials so and stuff. Is this I'm trying. Is this before we did Animal Olympics or after? It was. This was after because he did those. You know, they did, I think they did some animation that was going to be for the Olympics and it got cancelled or That's something like the, that. Yeah, the the basically the. Olympics were boycotted, which kind of ruined the whole thing for him. Yeah. So he made this lovely two-part film, which they kind of edited into one and blah, blah. We're talking a lot about other films and not about Tron. I do apologise, Oliver. <laughs> Look, it's Peter Jurassic. He was Londo in Jurassic... Um, I was going to say in Jurassic <laughs> Park. <laughs> He was Londo Malari, the ambassador in Jurassic Park. No, in uh, Babylon 5. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I have an action figure of him in my kitchen because reasons. <laughs> of all things. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. know. Um, but yeah, I mean, Disney were a little bit like confused on what this film would be about and how it would look. I think they, uh, uh, Lisberger had sort of storyboarded the entire movie and pitched this idea with all these kind of you know concept designs of what it will be like. But they're still kind of confused about this, you know, going from the real world to this computer world. And as a kid, I was always confused by the idea of these characters being programs because mm. as a kid, you just kind of like well. I had a Commodore 64 and I had games. I didn't really cons think this a program would be as such like a Word document, you know, an application that would let you type whatever or, you know, format a, 
a disk drive or something <laughs> like that. So the concept of when you explain it to someone, I mean, Stuart, we're talking before recording this, it would be like throwing in Photoshop versus, I don't know, like Final Cut Pro, and they've yeah. got to battle it out <laughs> in these tanks. And it's like, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't get in these combat things. I, I edit so, I edit videos. Why am I doing it? You know? um, so it's all, yeah, it's all a bit, a bit weird. But I think it was... I think that's kind of makes it work in a way to make it to make the idea that these programs have lives they they are living beings essentially in this world and and how they operate is it's kind of at the end of the day they're just kind of thrown into combat you don't yeah. see them complete any programs unless they I suppose Tron is the only one who is who has a an objective. True. I mean, what we're seeing here, Clue here kind of yeah. does, doesn't yes. he? But he doesn't get very far, as well we know. But um... this is essentially. But what you're seeing in the real world is Jeff Bridges typing the instructions, right, in a yes. very simple way, which actually wouldn't work in how he would search for something. No, it, it's, it's cinema programming that way. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Because you know, when you see people hacking into stuff in you know on film it's generally just quite it's a bit of a farce really it's a bit of a joke it's done oh. to make it look extravagant and yep, really I've, cool I've literally made a film like where swordfish. we do that so I'm not saying anything but um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got to do it a certain way or the audience is not engaged yet. no see I came coming to this a bit late um, I understood obviously the whole all their programs fighting whatever but it seems really weird because they're like fighting and destroying each other quite a lot. And like, if Excel is having a battle with Photoshop, <laughs> and then one of them kills the other one, and you go on your computer and like, where's Excel gone? I didn't uninstall it. <laughs> oh, it died in a tank fight. You know, that's, um, <laughs> it doesn't. This isn't really how a computer works. You know, there's, there's no. There's also no concept in this thing of of a virus. They don't actually. That could that could have been a plot to implement that. You know, mm-hmm. a virus is going to destroy Tron. It's probably a bit early for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Certainly course, a bit yeah. early without a lot of explanation to an audience. So maybe that was why they've avoided yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... it's They're also showing you games within it that are actually quite good games. Yeah. It's not that that idea of, like, these filmmakers are going to, you know, make a movie about video games, but what they actually create is a lot of old bollocks. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I wouldn't play that. Who's playing that? You know, um, so they're, 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 I think they've taken what things like that snake, you essentially got, you've got like, yeah. um, what's that, the Battle Tanks game? There's something on the, on the old spectrum I had. It's a thing in a battle zone? It's a battle zone, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit like that, I suppose, what he's doing with the tanks. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, Th- they did get their games and got sort of arcade culture in general, I think, which mm. is what kind of drew me into it at the time. They clearly, whoever made this, you know, got the idea behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the funny thing is that that's a great bit of trivia was that the Academy didn't let them get nominated for visual effects because they felt they cheated by using computers. Oh, fuck yeah. off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which is you ironic, cheated isn't it? by doing something new. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but the funny thing was, though, that what any maybe 20% of the footage is CGI and the rest is hand-drawn, rotoscoping, matte paintings to complete all this stuff. And it's, you know, multi-layered... Most of the layers of film photographs, so well, they've got a black and white element, you've got different elements to it to create. You've got like, what, five, six passes of film to create this one element. Sheer amount of work, and they just ignore it. You never have, it's never happened again, this method. Yeah. It's completely bonkers. Because they did a test, they did a two minute test for this, um, I think it was a, a computer show, something like that, and it took them months to get this two minutes done. And they're like, we, we've got a whole film to do. This is going to take us. 80 months or whatever to complete we can't do it so they sent it off to Taiwan all done like really quickly because that's what they did with like the Simpsons you know the classic story was that uh, the, even like Family Guy they, they ship them all off to Asia and they just crack the whip <laughs> get yeah. it done you know Blimey. but they sent when they sent the film back all the layers of paint they paint coloured in all stuck together it's like they go look, look put them when you put it back in the cans let them dry before oh, putting them in no. yeah that's great. Look at that. That neon. That's beautiful. That's really clever. That looks design. almost as Tron as the actual stuff in the computer. It you know? does, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is giving away the fact the character is essentially Sark, isn't it? Yeah. David Warner is both, you know. David Warner, I mean, what a fantastic actor. Always great yeah. at villains. You know, yeah. Dr. P in the, the League of Gentlemen movies. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Dark. What was just 
What fine yeah, bandits, wasn't it? Yeah, what do they call him in times? Was it darkness or just th- evil or something? Something like that. Like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't seen it for a while, actually. Um, no, so darkness is um, legend, isn't it? Tim Curry. Mm. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I do have his computer. That's a really quite cool design. It's like it's there's something like future tech about it. You know, it's yeah, zero tactile feedback. Incredibly difficult to type on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So master control was implemented by him. And also now it's kind of learned at a geometric rate, a sort of Skynet thing, isn't it? So well, he's yeah. kind of he's hacking to everything, um, and he's gonna and he's kind of David Warner's character. This seems to be letting Master Control kind of get away with these things. Um, I presume he's him to sort of maintain his power at, at Encom. Um, also, he's there. Warner's character's there because he, you know, took credit for Jeff Bridges' work because yes. he created all these video games and. Um, and that's what he's essentially using Clue to sort of find that data. The copyright, I suppose. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hanging the server to get his data back. His, I'm trying to think, his son or canonically appears in um, Tron Legacy, doesn't he? Is that, yeah, that's Killian Murphy. It's Killian Murphy's Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, he, obviously, you know, the guy who is who is Tron. Because it's always a weird thing, isn't it? Because as a kid, I thought Jeff Bridges is the hero. He's got to be Tron. He's not mm. Tron. No, it's, no. Bruce Boxline yeah. here. Yeah. What a, gr- what, a, what a great surname. Do you think his ancestors <laughs> used to lighten boxes <laughs> professionally? <laughs> <Yeah>. that's the... <laughs> Look at that monitor. That's, it looks like a, a flat screen as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Kind of does. You can't didn't really see at that, at that time. I mean, I'm sure it goes back five miles. But <laughs> yeah. There's a great matte painting coming up here when he stands up. Oh, my yeah. God. Look at that. That's Harrison Ellenshaw who did that stuff. That's good. Um Harrison Ellen Shaw did, you know, did all the sort of work on Star Wars, did all the map paintings, and pretty much supervised this with another chap called Richard Taylor, who sort of, who's supervised the sort of uh, CGI stuff. I've just realised Bruce Boxleitner, of course, went on to be Captain John Sheridan in Babylon Five again. That's two Babylon Five actors. Oh my God! Is two there a third? This office is a bit like um, Dick Jones's office. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Watch out, don't try and break directive four. <laughs> oh, Bruce. <laughs> Some very 70s glasses there. Oh, my God, yeah. They were supposed to, the characters in, in Tron were supposed to have loads of crazy kind of haircuts, like spiky kind of hair, like glitter in it. It's all kind of shining. But you can't, it makes it incredibly difficult to rotoscope around hair. So oh, that's why everyone has, of course. has well, the hats. That makes a lot yeah. more sense, yeah. And works aesthetically as well. So, mm. yeah. This is this is a film that's kind of uh, different like film stocks. All this lot this is sixty five millimeter shot. So this looks stunning to look at. You know, and uh, when they go into the CGI stuff's kind of Vista Vision and and you've got black and white photography for all the stuff where they're in Tron, because you need mm-hmm. to base that's why they all look a bit grey and the so, faces. And stuff, yeah, that's all. You've got to get your contrast. That's why you don't. Yeah, I think a lot of the real the real world stuff you don't get many crazy camera moves because this, those super Panavision cameras are so big and heavy. It's like yeah. and the short, I think, uh, depth on their on their lenses, vocal length. This has brought back a memory that, despite not having seen the film, I had a full set of action figures from this. Really? Wish I still had those, yeah. Wow. Got them at a car boot sale or like a market. Um, you know, brand new on packing. They were just like dirt cheap. Mm. My dad was like, I don't have all those if you want. They're like, they're like 10p each or something. Wow. Because of like light cycle and... Uh... Didn't have the light cycle. A friend of mine did, or a friend of mine's brother did. Very interesting tool. I thought they only, I thought they only brought out the light cycles. I don't... Mm. So there were figures then. Oh yeah, yeah. they were translucent uh, plastic. Oh, so Tron was purple for some reason, but all the other colours were white. Um, I don't quite <laughs> understand that. Yeah, <laughs> um, there was had Flynn, Tron, Sark, and one of those um, sort of master control program bodyguard types with the big, heavy, built-up armour. Oh yeah, like yeah, skinny little legs. Well, this is where they sort of explain how they get into the world of Tron, isn't it? But digitising. Yeah. An, an orange, essentially. And then yeah. we, we we're, were sort of joking about it earlier. It was like, for the commentary, it was like, <laughs> it should be so good if, like, someone found that orange in that <laughs> Tron world, you know. What, what is, is this? Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> we're being invaded. <laughs> was, the guys at South Park did a wonderful spoof of Tron where Facebook becomes, takes over, 
and then Stan's got to go into Facebook and it's all Tron. And yeah. they just, if he talks to him, they go, ignore, you know. <laughs> Do you like these photos? <laughs> <They're> like... <laughs> and he's got to play Yahtzee to win. He just keeps winning. So, <laughs> Surely it'd be so Farmville, good. come on. Well, yeah, that's, that's, they, they do talk about that, actually. That's quite funny, yeah. <laughs> Was it Cindy Morgan there, who's uh, who was in Caddyshack? Um, I think, oh. I think just before this. So this does actually look like a laboratory. Oh, it does, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's nice. In so many films, a laboratory is just like, <laughs> it feels like they've just put like a computer and a filing cabinet in someone's shed. Oh, God, know? yeah. These actually, these weird things, obviously clearly photographs, mm. and then are just like added bits to them. Ooh. Science montage. It's always kind of weird to think that C there was you know CGI back then because it was being used for commercials and sort of eye dents and stuff like that or like company yeah. logos. Um, but it's such a they can only do so many things. You couldn't have certain camera moves. You couldn't have the control of the lighting to a certain degree. It'd be very kind of you yeah, know unless you want to spend the rest of your life rendering it. Yeah. God, yeah. Because I mean, we saw CGI used in Wrath of Khan for the Genesis yes, project, yeah. which kind of shows you this. Kind of, but that was kind of creating something that was kind of visually realistic as much as possible. Mm. But this was this is clearly done to create a video game, and it, you can hide those limitations of technology, so, yeah. can't you? Well, absolutely, yeah, because yeah. it's part of the aesthetic, isn't it? So they must have like a really massive hard drive to store all the data of every molecule in that orange. Oh, <laughs> I imagine so, yeah. They must have had like a hard drive the size of the moon or something. Because they call it master control. So I mean, I'm assuming it's just another term for operating system, isn't it? Yes, I think yeah. that's it. Well, that's what they do in Legacy, isn't it? They, they've created, a, they're updating the new OS, but it's the same, but with more bugs. You know, yeah. so, uh, I suppose it's just a... A joke isn't on Windows, I suppose. I was, I mean, the operating system back then would have been so bare bones. I suppose the master control program is literally some sort of weird sentinel that controls all the other program. I yeah, that's it. I mean, I mean that's, that's it, certainly what happens it. in the narrative in the computer world. So yeah. yeah, because most software would just be on on the disk. Mm. You, know, you load it in, just loads it through the RAM, whatever. You know. so, yeah, they have very um, little in the way of permanent storage. Yeah, locally. There's that famous picture, isn't there? Really taken outside uh, Norwich City Hall of them installing the first computer. Like the, the hard drive is like the size of a room. You know, <laughs> it stores three bytes of data or something. You know, <laughs> and then this, it's co always contrasted by somebody holding up a Raspberry Pi Zero in really? the same position. You know, <laughs> Flynn's Arcade. I always try to like try and spot the arcades they've got. I think uh, either they've. Um... They've actually got official games there, or they've just kind of made up their own ones. But I'm not sure. If it's, um, they might have Space Paranoids was definitely not. A thing. No, no. <laughs> what a name! Space War. Space you know. War's real. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is, it's a weird period, isn't it? Because this period of time, arcades were seen as cool, the social thing. Then it has this kind of the stigma comes in later on, where it's just like greasy, smelly boys playing these things. You know, yeah. It's sort of, it changed, didn't it? The sort of the. Um... It was always a bit. You would never have seen like the head of the football team there, I don't think, mm. or the head of the tennis team, according to that kid. But <laughs> <laughs> Code Wars, the end. <laughs> Tax all, Wars, all your favourites. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Potato Harvest, <laughs> the monkey that couldn't stop spitting. All your favourites. <laughs> I think the best arcade game shown in a, in a TV show is probably The Simpsons. It's the uh, Waterworld arcade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> step forward uh, one step and game over. <laughs> what a ripper! Let's just bring more coins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love that because they've actually just took in... They've just, like, telecine the footage onto video for the arcade. So it looks great there, but when you yeah. see it on the, on, the, on the arcade, it's sort of like VHS tape, you know. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of an easy game, though. It's not even fighting back. <laughs> yes, it's an odd one, isn't it? It's like a really crappy laser disc it's, game, isn't it? It's like they, yeah, they haven't really thought about the mechanics of that one so much. I was surprised they didn't actually think of doing a laser disc version of Tron the game, where it's just like 
the same yeah. as Dragon's Lair, but th- with the high resolution sort of video. Yeah, the laser discs are. It's so much work to do the game, and they were so so unreliable, breaking down all the time. All oh, those players yeah. were, weren't they? Yeah, especially the early ones. Things like, um, oh, what was it called? Cube Quest, the one that sort of seemed to spin off the Polybius legend. That's kind of, yeah. I mean, one of the reasons it disappeared from arcades was because it was always pissing, breaking down. You know? <laughs> but it was insane for the time. Absolutely mm. insane. Just weird, proper VHS quality flying lizard tunnels. You know, really? No wonder people thought it was some sort of mind control experiment. You know. This is bonkers to see, isn't it? Because you're seeing, in the arcade today, you're looking at really primitive graphics, really. But you see mm. something like Dragon's Lair, I think, fuck me. It's, yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. But it's all an illusion, really. You're yeah, kind of no tripped. gameplay at all. It's Cube Quest, you yeah. did, it actually overlaid some early vector graphics on it, so it did mm. have a game, because the laser disc stuff was just in the background. Yeah. Oh, they, that couch is way too low down. That's you can do his back in. Yeah, getting up, you're like, yeah. you got you got to pull me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's a crappy handheld he's playing. It would be an yeah, awful. I'm trying to work out what, that, <laughs> what is. that is. You fully reviewed yeah. it at some point, Stuart. Come on, show us the screen. So you'd look up online. Somebody will have worked it out. The film didn't um, perform terribly. I, 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 it, it certainly was it sort of didn't meet Disney's expectations. Mm. It's kind of you know odd budget of a box sorry, odd sort of box office results for it. Like it was like thirty million, like fifty million. Um, it, I don't think it, I don't think Disney lost money, but it, they were expecting it to sort of be the next big thing. And I think they're mm. up against a lot that year. We had ET was kind of dominating yeah. everything. It was just like just it just kept everyone kept going back to see that and um, trying to cut through everything else with the advertising and try and get everyone to see Tron would have been a I suppose it would have appealed to kids at the time certainly, um, but uh, parents would have been like, "What is this?" So it's, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a hard barrier to entry, isn't it? And at the time, you pretty much had to go with your parents. It was too bloody expensive. Mm. Oh, Flynn there mentioned way, the Wayback Machine earlier. Yes. As a way to think. I wonder if that's where archive.org got the name from. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the Mac has Time Machine, where you can, if you've stored it, if you yeah, keep it running, you can just service, go back. It, but, but yeah, but I don't yeah. use it because it's just like, <laughs> your whole hard drive has been eaten up with stuff you've already, you've deleted years ago or you know, needed to. Um He must squeeze a lot of money, though, out of those arcades. Yeah, he you says, know. I don't see a dime, except what I squeeze out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> How much is that? How expensive is that incredibly low sofa? I always kind of, they only have a small amount of the real world in the movie. I always kind of forgot about this part. And you just kind of, you just yeah. kind of, as we saw, saw on TV, you always kind of miss the, the, the beginning and just, you know, watching it from like the light cycle bit then through the rest of the movie, where it just becomes this um, getting from point A to point B. Yeah. And that's, I think, I think for me is where it kind of, that's where its problems lie. Is that it's, it's story. It starts, it starts out well and informs the audience what is going to, going, going on. And, you know the simplest terms of who these programs are, even though it's a little bit kind of to some people maybe a bit obscure and a bit baffling. Um, but once they get on this adventure, it sort of just runs out of plot, mm. and he's got to just basically defeat the master control, which is essentially becomes it well, what it is is a video game, you know. Yep. So, yep. quite <laughs> it's very, very linear based, isn't it? They made the right decision to sort of minimize the real world stuff just because it's not really that interesting to watch a load of computer programmers complain about being locked out of systems, you know? <laughs> yeah. That doesn't really do it. <laughs> Made a lot of sense to get into the computer world quickly. But as you say, it's <laughs> a very simple narrative, isn't it? He entered my password. It said it's incorrect, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I, it's, it's always kind of funny when you have... They cast people that are... They have to give out a lot of techno babble especially about computers mm. or programming, and they've cast someone who has no idea what they're talking about. Um, Tron, it kind of, it, there's little elements where some of act, the actors are a bit like, okay, you don't know what you don't know what you're saying. You know, you have no there's no conviction on what you're what you're talking about. It's it's um, difficult. You yeah. never know which bits you have to spell out as well. I remember writing a script um, for a BBC thing years ago, and it mentioned the ZX81, and the presenter reading that bit said ZX81. 
<laughs> I'm like, oh no, it's eighty one. But of course, you don't know that because yeah. you're, you're, you know, you're not in the exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And remembering techno babble is some of the worst <laughs> stuff for a film. It really is. But you do need it sometimes. That's the sort of show, the human element, isn't it? To sort of translate that there's humans in that computer yeah, world. Exactly. Or you know, even though it's kind of ridiculous what you just yeah. said. It's like, what? <laughs> I, could you see this? It's kind of, maybe it's, it is before what happened, but the sort of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Well, they were going in the late 70s. So. Their argument. They're arguing and bitterness towards each other and the sort of competition yeah, where I he kind of left. He had left happened. Apple. I think maybe 85 he may have left. I don't know. Oh, but um, I, it was I always kind of saw it as like you could that. have a comment on about Warner's character being a bit like Steve Jobs where he is this, the ideas guy and he's just mm. abusing his power and he has like loses his temper. I suppose that, but actually that would be quite a good, um, if you did another sequel, have a character like Steve Jobs. Yeah. That's part of it. Um, do you think they'll do any more Tron stuff? Well, they're supposed to be doing. Well, only recently they said the the idea of Tron Three is back on. Oh, so um, but they apparently what someone has told me was that they were waiting for Daft Punk to become available or be ready to pursue with doing the music again. And I uh. thought, I said, you can't. The, the the driving force for a movie shouldn't be that a, a composer's free. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Despite the music being. Absolutely fucking wonderful. It's great score. Yeah. But there's many That's other just marketing, isn't it? There's other, yeah. there's other composers and musicians that they can do music like that and probably, you know, do it just as well. It's, you can't get Goblin back. <laughs> <laughs> Are Goblins still around? I have no idea. Let's go with um, Def Leppard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Def Leppard. Um, but can we get Joe Pascali to do all the vocals? Yeah. <laughs> It's a calculator and a half. <laughs> you probably add numbers on that and everything. <laughs> uh, it's, I always love seeing, you know, in the 80s, and I show these computer rooms, you know, this where everything's stored, and all the computers are like, they're just like ginormous dishwashers, aren't they? It's huge, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's like the prize board and sale of the century, isn't it? <laughs> all the white goods <laughs> coming up. Because I think would have been stored on um, uh, either. Is it real to real stuff sometimes? Yeah, a lot tape. of dat tape, yeah. yeah. And um, some sort of, I mean, I struggle to call them hard drives, but sort of magnetic platter yeah. storage at the very least. You know. It's going, this, this door's one megabyte. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An entire, me- that's 1,024 kilobytes. <laughs> Quite interested that blue computer they showed for a few seconds, mm. about thirty seconds ago. It, it wouldn't surprise me if it's actually some of the where they actually did the rendering for the footage of the CGI. Yeah. I'd imagine. Gort Klaatu Barada Nikto. Oh, I didn't notice that before. Blimey, there there's, there's a deep cut for you. Well, <laughs> you wouldn't normally say it with the Gort first, but he's, he's got the full line. <laughs> I was loved it in um, Army of Darkness where. Yes. Ash has to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Just like covers his way through, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> I said the words. Yeah. <laughs> there are Star Wars, um, Klaatu, Barada, and Nikto are like Star Wars species, aren't they, as well? They named them after that. Really? Yeah, they're all um, hanging around Jabba's palace, that kind of stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've just remembered that the Day the Earth Stood Still remake exists. Oh, oh that was dreadful. Bad times. Yeah, so. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose Keanu Reeves was kind of aptly cast because he's, you know, his character's supposed to be a bit like alien and stiff, but mm. took it to the next level. Well, yeah, the director's just like, no, Keanu, God, d- no, 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 don't move, don't blink, <laughs> please, I, had to, I, had I need pre- to breathe. <laughs> I had to preview that movie. God, it was oh. thunderously dull. I say it's not good. No. I've got a really nice action figure of Klaatu somewhere um, with um, Gort, but can't work out where I put the bloody thing. I think it's in storage from when I moved house. <laughs> it's probably buried under something, Stuart, yeah. in your office. God. <laughs> no, I think it's in a plastic tub in the garage, actually. The uh, Klaatu even has removable um, space helmet head, and you can replace it with a little Michael Rennie sculpt. <laughs> <laughs> 
the goat figure is much nicer to be honest <laughs> Sometimes it's always interesting to see what computers are actually using in these movies. But there's, I think there's one in A View to a Kill where there, it's, it's, got a, it's got an Apple Macintosh logo on the monitor, but the computer below, the keyboard thing, doesn't look like an Apple Mac computer. I yeah. thought, why why advertise that when one belongs to another company? I don't know. Yeah, it so maybe weird. it wasn't placement. They just stuck mm. it in, you know. You yeah. No idea. Reindeer flotilla. Re- you've got request stuff. You know, request data, you've got to type all that stuff in. It's just like very simple as well. Like, mm. I need to find this. And it's like, if you type that on a Spectrum or Commodore, it'd just be like, what? Oh, it'd you be know? some horrifying list of um, code, wouldn't it? Which oh, wouldn't read to the audience. God. Yeah. It's, it's the nightmare of. Um, I remember my sister, my old sister Emma, tried to put in a cheat for Turrican. On the Commodore 64, you've got to type all this code in, oh, man. magazine. And she spent two or three hours typing it out. Press enter to make it work. Didn't work. She oh. was fuming. <laughs> man, I did that on the Spectrum as well. Oh. All it took was one number to be typoed, which frequently happened. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. No, was they test it? No. That's quite... I, I, I really call it an effective design, how they've done this. So I quite like it. Pretty sure this would kill him, but let's not worry <laughs> oh, about that. Yeah. It's gonna digitize your insides. Mm. This comes out with a big jumbled mess. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh god, like tell the transporter accident in um Star Trek the Motion Picture. That's yeah. right, yeah. Or like in Galaxy Quest, it come, turns up it's, inside it's, out. Yeah. Oh. Boom, it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and it exploded. <laughs> That's right. Because this film had, had different companies providing the CGI. I think it's one called Triple I, and the other one was called Mag Eye, something like that. Um, or Eye Mag. So they, they tried, because obviously each company had their own techniques and their own methods of how to do this animation. Mm-hmm. But they had to try and create a consistency that you wouldn't notice that another company had come on to do the effects. I think by, on the, by the third act, you can kind of tell it's a little bit different to how some of the effects were kind of visualised in the middle act. Um, but I think this is probably some of the most impressive stuff as you sort of go in to Tron. Beam me up, Scotty. They also said, like, with the film stock, because um, you're supposed to use film, how, like, on a, a Kodak send you the film and you've got to use it in a certain order, mm-hmm. how it's been exposed and stuff. So, but they weren't, someone wasn't, someone just dumped them all in the corner and sort of grabbing different cans. So when you put the film together, when they photographed everything, you get these kind of weird flashes of light. So the, they thought, oh God, what's happened with the film stock? They figured out what they'd done wrong. But the flashes that are still in, they just kind of use it as a glitch, computer ah. glitch. So they add like a little effect. But when you, later on, you see him get thrown into prison. And he's talking, you hit this kind of bzzz, kind of effect. They've added the, um, ah, the glitch. There we are, lean it, into it. It makes it's, sense, wouldn't it? There's not many films you can do that with aesthetically, but it works in this, yeah. doesn't it? Later on, you see in the background, there's like a little Pac-Man. Yes, animated. that's infamous. Yeah. yeah. A user? <laughs> <laughs> I've sent in a VPN. What? <laughs> but... but <laughs> I'll never be able to find him. <laughs> he keeps moving around. Sock, we have a problem. Most of our storage is taken up with adverts for Raid Shadow Legends. User? That's right. He pushed me the rule book. Somebody pushes me and I push back, so I brought him down here. So about the end of the movie, you actually get to see what Master Control looks like as a human, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, because he's a bit weird. Cause he's just like this, um, just just kind of. I suppose it's kind of wireframe face, which is kind of fine. But at the end, when the third act, we have him kind of trying to defend himself from Tron. He's a, it's, like it's a giant it's, column. It's, thing, yeah, it doesn't look yeah. quite as a, quite as interesting. This is limitations, isn't it, of the time? Does he say? Oh, he says, "Yeah, end of line." (laughs) 
the action figure weapons, which were discs for everyone except the guards, which were staffs, were all glow in the dark. Oh, nice. And tiny and got lost in 10 seconds. Because in Tron Legacy, he has his, his son has the figure of Tron. A toy, he presses the button, it lights up, but obviously that's a new toy. So, yes, yeah. one of the ones they did for Legacy, I think, yeah. I remember when I saw Legacy, I mean, I remember the Disney logo at the beginning in 3D looked amazing, but the rest of the movie didn't really seem that 3D-ish to oh, me. Nice. I was like, oh, it doesn't quite work as well. I mean, it looks glorious, but it, the 3D isn't very 3D. We paid a fortune back when I really didn't have the money to do it as well, to watch it in um, IMAX 3D, and yeah. Mm. So you go, or did you go down to London or something to see it? No, no, in the local one. Oh, okay. At uh, Riverside, yeah. Um but it's, yeah, not impressive, really. Well, the IMAX was nice, but it's the old stereoscopy thing of the effect fades after, like, two minutes, you know. It does, yeah, And unless yeah. they're really sticking a staff right in your eyeball from the screen, <laughs> you just don't get much from it, you know. This is, a, you know, this period of Disney, as I was saying earlier, where they were sort of struggling with their theatrical movies... Um, they had a kind of yeah loads of loads of kind of failures didn't they because like the Black Cauldron yeah they spent loads of money on that didn't do very well and it released theatrically it kind of bombed and they forgot I've got to sit it. and watch that properly the Black it's, Cauldron it's not a bad yeah. film it's not awful I've heard it's sort of all right yeah but, you know it doesn't quite hold together so, yeah I mean the story's so unoriginal it's it's so very it's I know, it's Lord one of those Rings things where people adventure. who've read the books really don't like it they're mm. like oh they've missed the whole heart of it mm. but to be fair you hear that about every book adaptation whether oh, it's God, good yeah. or not really don't they, you? They, <laughs> they take like a, a couple of like stories and condense it into one movie sort of mm. scenario um, but animation wise it is really nice oh it's um, a beautiful thing to look at really mm. good voice talent in it as well mm. John Hurt etc yeah it wasn't until I would say Sort of the Roger Rabbit sort of phase and um, come like Little Mermaid where they really kind of struck yeah, big Disney again. Renaissance, yeah. Yeah. They said like you know, the other cast said David Warner was such wiry, thin, and tall, you know. But he obviously you know, he, his character gets really tall at the end. He sort of you know makes himself really big to attack Tron. It's interesting that his character has such a special hat. Nobody else has one like that. It's yeah. Obviously, a mark of status. It's a pie dish. <laughs> it was chicken and mushroom, and it was delicious. <laughs> That's a good little line. De resolution. Yeah. I like that. De resed. That's the famous track from, um, well, one of the famous tracks from the Tron Legacy soundtrack. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so the great thing about something as so heavily stylized as this is it never really dates does it no it doesn't because it no, has that it, deliberate it, feel it's to it simplicity um sort of keeps it somewhat relevant and um interesting to look at you know mm. i think it's such a I mean, they they did a great job with the sequel to sort of modernise it and keep still keep it retro, mm. but it did lack some of the colour of this. Yes, it was kind of it was it was more muted, tendon. wasn't it? it was, yeah. Um, this is all backlighting, isn't it? Uh, back animation, really. But they had to they literally like you know you photograph and they blew up every frame to, to, to paint it in. So this nice. essentially you take a live action movie and then turn it into an animated movie. It's just like what? Blimey. Bonkers, isn't it? I specialise in throwing dinner plates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're both some like work for banks and stuff. Def, yeah. You know. I load um, data off cassette tapes. <laughs> on the uh, Commodore 64. What is my purpose? <laughs> <laughs> you decompress the pornographic GIFs that we download. <laughs> so the only thing that gives it away, really, is the sort of fringing and stuff on the characters, which would be a lot cleaner these days. Yeah, there's like picture weave to it. There's a yeah. shake, isn't there? Like there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But again, this is something I'm probably just noticing because I know about films. I don't think mm. really... You know, kids watching it these days are going to go, oh, the edges on that were a little bit loose. <laughs> you know. 
because everything comes. That's, 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 that's a photo, isn't it? Because they're not moving at all. Like they're the yeah. guy in the foreground and his feet. Because yeah, because with the sort of the matte paintings for everything, really, the color, it, it, everything does look very two D. Like it, obviously, everything feels like they're kind of stuck on, but. which is exactly how computers and stuff were at the time, of course. Mm. Yeah. Peter Jurassic returns. Oh my god, I've forgotten the giant ice cream scoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> was the uh, well because we went up to the um, the arcade, didn't we, in Manchester? What was, we did. What uh, was it called again? Um, arcade Club in Bury. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they had, they, had, they had the Tron arcade, and it's, it looked identical to the one that's in the film. And I was like, wow, that's really. It's really quite cool because then for them to sort of replicate what you see in the film, put it in the yeah, it's a way to do it. You know, it's yeah. uh, very clever. People love a proper um, tie-in, you know. And I mean, it's but well the screen done. was so small, though. It you know, was, it was yes. small. I it's, I never because it's kind of it's bounced off, isn't it? It's reflective, like the monitors down Just below. Yep, sort of through yeah, the mirror. The mirror, yeah. yeah. So you'll see a flicker now, like a glitch, because zzz, so that's where the um, the exposure had gone. Got a bit yeah. do lally. But the games, though, I mean, in the world of Tron, are still even with Legacy, they're still kind of essentially sort of um, like gladiatorial kind of matches, aren't they? Essentially, where you've got you've got a bike race, which is still the same the light cycle, and you've still got this kind of challenge. They don't actually they don't attempt to modernise their games that much. Yeah, they'd be difficult to read if they were all playing Minecraft or something, <laughs> wouldn't it? You know, or Fortnite <laughs> or something. You know. yeah. uh, I remember this, at this point, Flynn thinks this is a um, more a sort of sport than a game, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. More, he's, sorry, more a sport than something lethal. Not that yeah, he's, he's, he's going to no, he's going to de-res him, isn't he? Yeah. Finish the game! He's like... Hmm. It's always a great thing with David Warner in the League of Gentlemen where he's like, he captures the dude and he's like, going to punish him. He goes, give him the lady's cuddle. He goes, that's not too bad. <laughs> he yeah. puts him in a tiny box with his coat on. <laughs> he goes, he's boiling in here. <laughs> Must die playing for reasons. Should have just killed him immediately, even quicker. Wouldn't it? Well, you were saying there's another game similar to this, because the, 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 there's two games of Tron, isn't there? The discs one, and then there's yeah, the discs racing of one. Tron, and then yeah, the sort of Tron game. The one I played was a a rip off of discs of Tron, basically on the Atari ST, is also an Amiga version, and a very good Amstrad CPC version, oddly, um, just called Disc. Oh, it's really fantastically good. Isn't the game um, that film for the Neo Geo that Windjammers a bit like? Yeah, this, like, sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it more, more like of a... sort of. There's more the f sort of throwing disc frisbee sport. <laughs> but yeah, it's still very disc based. Well, the music in this is done by um, Wendy Carlos. Uh, she'd um, done the music on The Shining, which oh. is the sort of electronic stuff in that. Because I think that film also has a lot of licensed kind of music that Kubrick often did that, sort of taking, mm. you know, old music and kind of throwing it in. But um, this is quite a good score. There's a couple of moments where it's a little bit a bit dated for the time. It's a bit cheesy. Later on, it's quite funny. I always make you giggle, but there's kind of some really effective stuff in it. This is Blue Leader. I'm explaining the how the game works for the audience. Over. <laughs> yeah. Rogue One standing by. Yeah. <laughs> Simply Red standing by. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, imagine this, this would be amazing to see on a big screen. It's like, whoa! Yeah. See that 70 millimeter sort of version. When it, there's also the making of on the movie is extremely detailed. It's like a, about 90 minutes long. I think there's. They've done a really good Laserdisc um, version um, in the mid-90s, and they sort of ported over a lot of stuff over to the DVD, and I think they did a new 
kind of retrospective and the, the guy Richard Taylor I think some of the other teams have talked about how they programmed a lot of this stuff and it just sounds an absolute nightmare where you just type like 600 lines of code for one one or two frames of animation Ooh. where you've got, it's got to know where the camera is it's got to know where everything is kind of plotted out so you've got no graphic preview or anything yeah. no no you Absolutely. could see things like a frame at a time or every other frame um, so you, you couldn't see as you say like a preview like play it back like a pre-visualisation of, of things so it made it you have to be so precise to do it no, it's frightening and the amount of time it must have taken to render even one frame oh. This is where, you know, John Lasseter had seen, he was obviously working at Disney at the time. I think he was working on the Muppets, um, not Muppets, sorry, Mickey Mouse's uh, Christmas special, I think it was. Oh. It was just near the Scrooge. With, yeah, the, yeah, it's done the Christmas Carol one. Um, and he'd see some of the CGRs, like, this is the future. You know, mm. this is what sort of led to the sort of building blocks of working with, you know, setting up Pixar. Um, how wrong he was because computer graphics were never used again <laughs> especially not in every film all the time for <laughs> things you'd never even notice things like booming sh you know booming shot isn't a problem anymore which is no, you know amazing in and of itself you can see like the, like the camera movements there like how it's done it's all very like stiff it's, yeah how it's trying to it's, sort of, here's Pac-Man yay yeah. Oh, he's killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he's dead. <laughs> Smashed with his mighty David Warner arm. <laughs> Send in the plumbers. Apparently, <laughs> 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 like, Luigi's come smashing on everything. <laughs> I suppose that's where, like, that Racket Ralph had really, you know, gone into that computer world and actually had every other, oh, well, a huge list of other video game characters kind of thrown in, um, which is kind of. So it's, the um, to, sort of, to get, I suppose, video game fans interested in a character that isn't actually part of that video game world. Record Ralph's, Record Ralph's kind of you know his own thing, own yeah. IP. Um, with Tron, you're not you're not bumping into other video games, yeah. oh, are you? You know, no, characters. Yeah, it's, it's all been, very wouldn't have happened. Yeah, all very pared back, isn't it? But even back then, eighty two, there probably wasn't enough recognisable characters to be to make yeah. any sort True of yeah. impact. Yeah. You license yourself a Pac-Man and your Donkey Kong, and that's it. Really, that's isn't it, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's falling slowly. Oh, it kind of exploded, but yeah, but they like cut one from that frame. very quickly. Yeah, something didn't look right there. I do love the design of those light cycles. They're really cool, aren't they? It's, it's a little bit like um, um, Akira had kind of seemed to have borrowed some some visual elements from that for those light those Ooh, bikes. Oh, this is a I'd never thought of the that. But that's has. a good point. Yeah, yeah. Kaneda's bike. Yeah. What's he talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> useless 80s reference of the day I don't, this is a great moment because they, they find cause you never see him eat anything but you do see him drink something which is this kind of liquid I believe it's just water of the computer world but it gives yeah. them their energy back yeah. and then it's some sort of slightly addictive to it as well Clue has it in the tank doesn't he he materialised a little cup of it oh did he I drank it earlier yeah because oh, right. he's got that little weird device that's floating around him yeah, it yes, reminds yes, me of yes, Cursor yes. from Auto Man, if you know that reference. Auto Man, yeah. God, yeah. Which is, this is a complete copy of this, wasn't it? It's like the same yeah. backlit kind of character. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Auto Just Man. done cheaper, yeah. I had a novelization of Auto Man, which I must have read three times when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big I was, fan then, Stuart, weren't cool, you? cool, yeah, for... I don't know why, because it had been off television for like 10 years. What did he do again? Did he just kind of like, did he turn into stuff? He had, no, so Cursor could make like a helicopter, not very often, that's expensive, or a car for him. Right. Um, but he, yeah, he would appear, and he could only appear at night because he used so much electricity that during the day, he, he was too much of a drain on the grid, so he'd just like they fade could away. could the effect in the day, yeah, 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 this is it, he had to be out at night, because the effect didn't work, if not, yeah. <laughs> God. I've got an action figure of that somewhere. It's awful. <laughs> really awful. 
really rubbery head, like a dog toy, you know. There you go, this is where they find the... Uh, it's the blue stuff from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, <laughs> s- space cow milk or whatever it was, yeah. Sweet, sweet heroin. <laughs> yeah, there's that weird sort of... Hmm. Yeah, they're enjoying it a bit too much, aren't they? Yeah, because it, it sort of yeah, it gives them. Because they haven't actually, I, I presume they're, sort of, they're just sort of starving and thirsty, aren't they? So they just sort of become sort of addictive drink for them. Oh, it's filtered water! Yeah, oh, it's Fiji amazing. water, amazing! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> much better than out of my tap. <laughs> Clue was better than them because he could uh, pilot one on his own. Exactly. Oh, so, you know, as I was saying, saying earlier on, the little floating thing, and you were talking about Auto Man. Mm. In Tron Legacy, you see on his mantelpiece, yes, those two little um, little square things, which is kind of represents oh. that uh, sort of AI that doesn't it doesn't really stick around for long. That's when Clue can figure out that he can repair. One of the big vehicles, it all sort of comes together. Yeah. Because he's a user. Uh... Oh. Got their bikes back. I thought the control stick things they had earlier evaporated. Did they? Uh, well, um, maybe I got the wrong end of the stick there. Yeah. Uh-huh. They should have actually had it some on their waist. So they've got like a, you know, they can use it as a weapon. Yeah. You know, they can use a, you know, multi number of things. Oh no. Oh, this is where um, I think Ram gets hurt, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting with the score, isn't it? Because there's, elect- there's a synth stuff thrown in, but actually a lot of orchestral stuff. You think they would have actually gone full on. Electronic, at the time. yeah, it's interesting, and perhaps they f- didn't feel cinematic enough or whatever, you know. Mm. Then again, for Tron Legacy, that's a mix of orchestral and electronic it, it, again. It isn't is it? as well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's not a complete. Um, I suppose it's. Um, you would say creatively, the orchestral stuff would represent humans, the real world, and the music of, of the computer world would be yeah, electronic, yeah, electronic, so yeah, electronic yeah. Yeah. mix of the two. Fine, feed him some of the cartoon rocks, he'll be fine. <laughs> the uh, the director, um, Stephen Lisberger, he, he make, makes a cameo in Legacy, he's like, he's, he works in the bar. Oh, I didn't um, realize that. He, I think he's executive producer as well. But he had, I think the last film I think he did was, um, what was it? Was it Slipstream, which had Mark Hamill in it? <gasps> Oh, yeah! Bloody hell! Produced by Gary Gary Kurtz, one, one of yes. the biggest bombs. It wait well, roughly at the time because it. Um, I think they run out of money basically, and um, the, it, the poster for it looks great, but the film itself is a bit. Um, it's one of those films I only know of by reputation. Mm, Never actually watched yeah. it. Yeah, Gary Kurtz lost a load of money. I think he kind of made him bankrupt. I think maybe Ooh, um, that didn't do good. particularly well. Um, yeah, I think it's the last thing Steve did. Um, I mean, this has been, you know, if pardon the pun, his legacy. Um, Sean has. Um, oh, Ram. I mean, if you, all the films that came out in 82, I think this and Blade Runner were probably the most visually kind of advanced, I think, with their with their styles yeah I mean, good god for the time this was so advanced it's terrifying really if <laughs> <laughs> only because of the sheer amount of work that went into it yeah yeah
Are you saying there's um there were obviously there were ports of the game, weren't there, to the microcomputers, weren't there? Was it just the Atari? Oh, there's I only know of the Atari for the official ones. So there wasn't any like Commodore Specky versions. Hmm. I honestly don't mm. know. I have I, no uh, idea. I, think on I that. saw the Atari ones, yeah. Yeah, I definitely um, remember the twenty six hundred stuff, but Yeah. Because it is, as like Tron two point wasn't there? You were talking about yes, that came, that came years this. later and way yeah. before Tron Legacy as well. Yeah, very interesting FPS game, very good, but ruins itself with um, platforming sections. Oh, Don't no. have platforming sections in FPS games. But it was because it was a, a TV series, isn't it? Because I presume it's based off a TV show. Or was it just its own thing? There is some sort of animated thing. Yeah, isn't there was. There? Yeah, that, that was. Um, I think it was quite well received actually by the fans of Tron. Um, yeah. I saw a few episodes. It, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit fussy with those sort of things, though. It's like it's, you know, if you, you have a movie franchise and they decide not to do another sequel, but we could do a cartoon show. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Mm. I'm Depends how big your universe is. Are yeah. you using all the same characters again? Then mm, if you're telling a different story with different characters, yeah, mm. all right. I'm up for that. Yeah. Like the old Star Wars stuff with um, I never Clone watched, Wars I never and watched Rebels. That. Yeah. I never Couldn't did. get any interest in Clone Wars. Saw a bit of... I like the Tartovsky stuff at the start. Mm. Tart- is that his name? I might have got that wrong. Never remember. <laughs> um, Samurai Jack Man. Um, then the late stuff I thought was dreadful. Apparently it really picks up if you like sit with it for 48 series or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I do have that. Uh, yeah, it's a common thing with my friends and I recommend me TV shows. It gets really good on it by like season four or five. And I'm like, I'm not so, yeah. watching two or three seasons to get up to get up to pace on what's going on. Because I will no. hate it by then. <laughs> you know, yes. Sort of yes, and, and I'll hate you as well. <laughs> 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 Recommended me shit. <laughs> Uh, I, I liked Star Wars Rebels, but a lot of that is because it wasn't based around the characters you know. You know, ah. here's another story in the mm. universe. Of course, everybody turns up at one stage because they always bloody do. But it's interesting. He's going red and he slightly dies. Yeah. You turning evil? Yeah. Because <laughs> he can. Because we see later on because a clue doesn't he? He copies one of the security guards. He just touches him and, and he goes red. Yes. So, um, and that's never actually. Um, explained because it we they show that the people that are red are essentially working for master control they're the bad guys essentially in this world yes um but you know it doesn't it doesn't change his state of mind no so, it literally just changes the color of yeah. old uh, so you can get around quite Flynn here, quite it, sneakily yeah. by being a spy yeah by changing colors you know you can find some computer dye then nobody will know <laughs> yeah i wish the uh, the signals, the, the in and out. It's, it's cool, yeah. isn't it? Something like that. Meanwhile, our not Star Destroyer. Because he's got to send a message to Bruce Boxleitner or whatever, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. His disc. That's, it's, I presume he's just take, waiting forever. It just, it just says, searching, searching on his computer. It's like, oh, Yes, yeah. I'll come back to this. <laughs> Still doing it. So how much real time goes on while they're I in don't the computer know. Yeah. thing? Is it much, much quicker? I can't remember. Yeah, that, that's, that's not explained. Yeah. You know. Now, this is really impressive with the solar sail thing, right? Where they've created transparency. Mm. When you see it kick in, and it's like. <laughs> you would say Saturn can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it could it in, yeah, in some just, cases. It didn't have a chip for it specifically. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, transparency is in 982 on a computer. That's bonkers. What is this witchcraft? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the VDP word chip doing that. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a painting. It must be really, really weird because he grabs her and she's like, still giving out data and he's like no 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 it's me oh hello it snaps out of it <laughs> see your numbers again <laughs> it would be, be kind of interesting to find out it is you know your character in this in this company that like in this tron world you are a program we don't know what program you are though so what would you be so what i think um, you should like find out you're some sort of trash can. <laughs> 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 For fuck's sake! <laughs> 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 
Clippy from uh, Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. he should have been the real villain. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cursor's back. There we go. He's obviously, you can see that out, outside the vehicle, it's just hand drawn animation. Actually, going quite, it's not, not really smoothly, it's very like, quite low frame rate, actually. Mm. And you see other the other people of in the world of Tron when they. Um, when he crashes the ship, he's well, the vehicle he's kind of driving, and he comes to like a, a kind of a city, I suppose. And you see like maybe four or five people. There's a couple of like look like prostitutes, really. And there's one that's like a giant light bulb. Um, which is oh, there you go. Yeah, literally! Oh my god! I don't <laughs> and, remember that. And it, you know. Yeah, Adam's cousin it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a over bloody there. filter over there. What? <laughs> that's what I thought it looked like. It's a search filter. <laughs> Oh, dear. God, I've totally forgotten this. <laughs> it's quite mm. clever when he um, he smashes something and it all breaks apart and it all goes back together again. It's quite quite good animation. <laughs> I mean, that would have been a nightmare to do. Just having those rotating blocks, I think. Oh. Now he's got it back to. He's all right. He's back together. The animation held up. It's a bit like um, that video game Res on the Dreamcast. Oh, yes. The kind of wireframe thing. Yeah. In it. That was the further you get in, the more detail the character yeah, gets. Yeah, the music sort of changes when you hit the beats and stuff. Oh, That's yeah. bonkers, that game. That goes for a lot of money if you've got an original copy of that. Oh, God. I sold mine. Donkeys ago. Yeah, as did I. What like the PS2 one? Was that, all, that must be somewhat valuable. The, n- or not? not massively. When it came out, it massively reduced the value of the Dreamcast one, of course. But, oh, yeah. um, they everyone sort of got rid of it and realised actually yeah. that's the most valuable one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they did remaster, didn't they, for the old 360? Yes. I believe they did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was an sure Xbox available. Live game, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, you landed. Such as it is. There you go. Oh my goodness, a very sort of robotic looking one on the left. It's like they're floating on the right, they don't actually give them any platform to stand on. That's quite weird. It must have been filming like um like a I suppose how some, some modern movies are made with just a green screen and look at this here and stuff because it's an empty room and they're kind of running around. Yeah, and, unheard of at the time almost, but yeah. now incredibly common. Oh no. It's quite easy to defeat these guys, isn't it? It's one punch and they're down. Yeah, and then you get to copy their colour somehow. He's playing this on easy. <laughs> it's about cheat coding. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. dead. <laughs> Load the game, Genie. End of line. Yeah. My God, he's turned the, the sweat in Mortal Kombat on the snails to red. Oh, no. How did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird effect. He spins around. Oh, like whoa. It's so weird. Oh, God, that was strange, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Bloody has borderline like something out of a Fulci film or something, right? <laughs> it's, it's it's funny when you look at like old um, sort of I put news reports from like high f- technology or some shops that sold computers or hi fi's, and they'd have this greyish kind of walls with a bit maybe something's a bit of neon it looked mm. a bit tron like in your sort of memory as a kid it's like, it's like tandy or something yeah. You're running through tandy here <laughs> you know we must get to the end of radio show or something mm. yeah. rumble <laughs> oh no, i heard that name for a while <laughs> there was this sort of aesthetic wasn't it that had to sort of be associated with selling technology and how 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 the shop would look and how things were kind of even like in films, they betray things in a certain manner. Mm. 
He's just, it, Tron's just a search engine, isn't he? He's searching for stuff. <laughs> well, he's supposed to be a, uh, like a virus check, isn't he? Or he checks yeah, a, some sort of security or yeah. something like that. Was It's odd how the woman's helmet there is so sort of basic as compared to the others. There's almost nothing on it. It's like a swimming cap that glues mm. some stuff to, as opposed yeah, to all the structure of the. Yeah, others. it's not like it's not reinforced, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody Hans! Oh, hey! <laughs> what the, what has he got on his head? <laughs> <laughs> they should have some weird, wacky stuff like there's a giant floppy disk drive that talks and stuff. And- <laughs> As a mouse, you know, yeah. <laughs> with no right click, you know, <laughs> just one click. <laughs> Getting almost out. a Cheshire cat vibe from this one. Oh, she's not wrong. I'm trying to squeeze through the window. <laughs> yeah. There she is. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... <laughs> but that's too small. Three Stooges thing going on. They're <laughs> all trying to get through it it's at once. Shit. That'd be great. Do not disturb me when I am wearing my penis hat. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Either a penis or just a giant thumb. <laughs> <laughs> giant thumb. <laughs> oh, mighty thumb. Let us pass. <laughs> mighty rotating thumb. <laughs> Logic probe. That's like audio app isn't it logic oh, logic <laughs> and launch logic pro yeah. <laughs> not this massive bass line into it yeah. doom doom yeah. here we go yeah. <laughs> dubstep our way in yeah. <laughs> drop the beat <laughs> this is a really cool design I love all this stuff there's kind of weird moments where actually at the end of the film they had the music it's like this kind of choir very Disney-esque kind of music this is um this is like a completely different sort of design to what we saw earlier. Because it, it had stuff by Mobius and Sid Mead do work mm-hmm. on it. Sid Mead, I think, passed away quite recently, actually. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he was a design artist on you know, future tech. Worked on like Blade Runner and um, I think even Time Cop. Oh, no. It's nicking your Frisbee, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Replace it with a hacky sack. <laughs> So slow. It's, 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 a, it's a very slow processor, isn't it, in Tron? Yeah. Come on. Come on. It's, it's slowed down for the audience. In reality, this only takes a week. <laughs> Alan won. <laughs> oh. Uh. Confirmed. Xbox, best Xbox Gamer 1 or something. You know. <laughs> Unicorn Sparkle 37, confirm. <laughs> Throw your dinner plate into the centre. Radio. That's the iconic image of when he's sort of stand up with the plate. The, the post is so good for Tron, though, isn't yes. it? Yes. Also, I've got to try and source that. I might have to get a sort of reproduction poster because the original quad, UK quad, would be a fortune and the US one sheet would probably be just as much. Mm-hmm. And his chest plate, it's like a plug, isn't it? Ah! It's, it's not even like a Euro plug, it's more like a UK plug. It's got an extra pin. Positive, negative, <laughs> earth, and that's just a bit of that's, sky. that's a bit of comedy there. Yeah. Isn't it? We're kind of looking around the corner. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit Scooby Doo there. I'll eat it a giant was. sandwich in a minute. <laughs> Take 
he came out of his weird hole, but we won't show that because that would be difficult. It would be like <laughs> watching Robocop get out of the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the backgrounds look very different to how they did earlier, actually. Mm. It's, as you sort of get the impression that maybe some of the backgrounds just weren't fully uh, finished, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. This is like, this is really, when they fire up the solar sail, it does look pretty impressive. Which they do use again, they, they use in Tron Legacy. They do, yes, yeah. absolutely. And Count Dooku's got one in um, <laughs> Attack of the Clones. Oh, does he? <laughs> oh, God. Just something similar. Yeah, some, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something similar to that, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's got yeah. it. <laughs> 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 this is the music here. It's a bit weird. Oh, that's a bit it's, Bon Tempe demo mode, it's, isn't it? It is a bit Casio keyboard, yeah. sort of like, you know. You've had the soundtrack on, like, yeah iPod listening to it. This bit comes on, you'll be like, oh, my ear. Oh, right. Skip track. Skip track. Yeah. So she's playing whack a mole or something. Isn't <laughs> she's powered it up. Bye. <laughs> Swoosh. It's that shot again, isn't it? You see with these kind of long spaceships like in the Sulaco and Aliens. Yeah. See, it's that side angle with it going towards the planet, you know. Oh, he's he's fucking up, isn't he? He's messing up the whole the whole plan. Yeah. <laughs> he's injecting him with ties up. <laughs> oh, I need no only like iron brew. <laughs> <laughs> he's all getting red now. Yeah, he's all getting angry. Hmm. <laughs> It's always interesting, isn't it, when they, have, when they have, like, you see a visual representation of the AI in, in these kind of movies where, like, in Terminator Salvation, they sort of, it chooses a face someone they may recognise, you know, which ends up being, like, Helen Bond Carter, doesn't mm. it? Um, and, like, The Matrix uh, Revelations, um, where it's, it's kind of, its face is made up, made up of all the... Um, yes, little swarming, little swarm robots, thing, doesn't it? Yeah. Creates this kind of baby-like face, who just kind of yeah. sh- shouts. It's very angry. Or when you see like the architect as an old old yes. man, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So it's sort of, um, but it's always they always try and show you something that's a little bit more comforting, you know, um, because behind it all there's this kind of emotionless kind of machine. When this, they actually just have a wireframe kind of representation, uh, which. But uh, as I said earlier, you actually do get to see uh, the human side of it, um, which is yeah, or as close as it gets. Yeah, yeah. Op- operating a sort of typewriter, which is quite strange. Yeah, he's a bit weird here. It's like you, you're my ex girlfriend, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, It's the Tron symbol there, the sort of three squares, the one square below that gives away who Rinsler is in um, Tron Legacy, isn't it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, because we, yeah, because you know, Tron Legacy was the one that sort of, well, those early attempts on of de aging people, wasn't it? With Jeff Bridges, yeah. which doesn't. It's a fully hold CGI on. face, and it's just yeah, bad. it's the lips. The lips just don't work. Yeah, it's always difficult. Um, I remember seeing a. Um, it was a presentation by a bunch of FX guys who work for like um, uh, I think moving picture company maybe or as, as ones the ones based in sort of Soho. Oh, mm-hmm. I can't remember their names now. Um, 
and they said the, the difficulty of doing those effects I mean you sort of you know, sort of uncanny valley problem where you kind of add too much detail and it ends up looking worse yes, um, and the movement's never quite right is it no no I mean when you see watch legacy and you see the younger version of um, Jeff Bridges from behind it's fine yeah <laughs> Okay. As long so, as you don't see the monster's face, yeah, well, everything's the side fine. profiles are okay, but when you see him, the first one's supposed to giveaway, isn't it? When he's, mm. you have the sort of flashback and he talks to his son and leaves the house, I think, oh, that doesn't quite work. Because um, Benjamin Button had sort of had used, utilised the effect. And it's got, I think it's got, it has got better over the years, but it was, um, it's unfortunate they kind of, I don't know, showed his face too much. Yeah, they yeah. make the same mistake in Rogue One with zombie Peter Cushing yeah that's uh, overly confident I think, yeah with, uh, with it you know they're absolutely yeah. even the layer at the end like the layer at the end looks amazing until it moves its lips and then the whole thing falls <laughs> apart instantly you know? don't move don't move please don't move. hell even more recently in Rise of Skywalker you've got the um, flashback scene with Luke and Leia and Hamill looked all right. One looks all right. Fishy doesn't look. No, great. no. Weird, then this it? is it, isn't it? You're like, oh, that's that's improved. Oh no, no, it hasn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I've seen the other one. Yeah. because yeah, those deep fake things are just incredible now. Like, yeah, how do they do it. The yeah. problem with deep fake is you can't turn head. Mm, yeah. So you, you've not got, you know, the you've sort got, of freedom yeah, a cinematographer kind of would weird, want. It's, like, it's static still when the face has moved. It's like it's sort it's, of. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work from the side. Not right, no. You have to be careful about like, picking the right to... films to do it, you know, how yeah. it's shot. You know, so. As with so many of these things, use it sparingly, you know. Oh, that's quite clever, I like that. A little bit yellow submarine, this, isn't it? <laughs> But I don't think, yeah, Tr I don't think Tron Legacy had, you know, I think that also slightly underperformed for Disney. Did, did, and it, yeah. And it's and it's those kind of things where it's great when they give us. I like when they do sequels to movies. Like they don't. Oh, we could do another bloody reboot again. I like that they stay true to the legacy of Tron. Mm. You know. Um, I'd, I'd like them to stop making them and make some new films. Yeah, with oh, of course, of course, of course, course. You know, so, but there's there's some things where uh, you know that I'd like them to sort of return to certain films if there's, if the idea is good. The problem um, with a reboot or a remake is there's got to be a reason to remake the original. You remake bad other films with good ideas. Money. Yeah, this is it, isn't yeah. it? You want to see remakes of films that didn't work, but of course nobody likes the films that didn't work, so they don't remake them because they won't have the name recognition. You know. I mean, great example. It's something like Ocean's Eleven, which mm. nobody particularly liked the original of. It's not very good. It's very much Rat Pack playing to type. Mm. And the remake is far, far better. That's a great movie. You know? yeah. Find a flawed film. Mm. Remove the flaw. You know? I still think like Van Helsing is a completely flawed film with oh. a, great, a great concept. Right? Yeah. That could have been Universal's Dark Universe. Well. Kickstarted kick it with uh, Van Helsing as the, essentially the Iron Man of the whole bunch. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they're kind of... Kind of try that, out, mate, but with, every um, time they do it, it fails, and they pretend it, they weren't trying. To. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Yeah. False start, false yeah. start. I we'll Frankenstein, no, 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 that wasn't a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. mummy, no, 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 actually, no, no. But no, no yeah, they're, too, they're yeah. just now doing the whole essentially just do one-off movies like Invisible Man and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is quite a cool effect when it smashes into the solar cell thing. Oops, going to clip it. Yeah, that's good. Ooh. <laughs> the Toblerone prison. <laughs> <laughs> it's just little nuts <laughs> and bits of toffee that get stuck in your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> He's an airport size one, Stuart. He's a big. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I only eat Twin Peaks from Poundland, so. <laughs> I thought you were dead. Oh, that's, yeah, oh, nice touch. That is very good. It's 
really needed bigger legs, those guys. That was a problem with the action figure as well. Really bulky torso and upper half. <laughs> and these tiny little legs underneath. Stick legs, you know, yeah. yeah. That's when you see like, it's like bodybuilders, you know, they've focused too much on the upper torso, not their legs. Oh, <laughs> skipped leg day. Yeah. yeah. End up looking like really bizarre action figures, you know. <laughs> Top heavy, mate. Because the security guards, it kind of looks like they're working wearing like American footballer kind of, yeah, like shielding, massive it? padding, yeah, massive, and yet nothing on the legs. Mm. Ah, there, that clearly looks like a video game again. <laughs> so this is less visually consistent than I remember. Mm. But again, I don't think that's something I really noticed because I'm sitting here looking for it now, probably. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's like there's yeah, there's clearly some shots where things look actually look finished. Some things look a bit too simple for their visual design. Um, but you know, the amount of layers of film they've done, it's just like sort of moan about one shot would be kind of. Uh, it's not not justified. I think. I think it's um, it's um, what they've achieved is just like phenomenal. Must have, but you know, if you're, if you're an effects artist watching this, and you probably worked on this, maybe you'd be like, oh, I'm not happy with that shot. Oh, that shot. Oh that's, god, that's any creative endeavor, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like here, this, this effects stuff's done by a different company now, a different computer effects company. So it's kind of slightly. I think there's, you can tell a slight difference between. What you saw early on with like the light cycles, I think there's um, different techniques and um, like grading. I think with the the colouring. Oh god, I'd be so dizzy. No wonder it's angry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Ice resing it. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be turned from sixteen bit to eight bit. No. no, it's, it's going to be teletext. <laughs> only three bits. No. <laughs> oh. That's just an excuse to kiss her. Kiss of life. <laughs> Come on, we need to get some of that um, energy juice you had earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Electrolytes. Yes. yes. <laughs> Let's go behind this triangle. That looks like the Prism Leisure logo from the eighties. <laughs> Mom, stop it! Well, get off! I'm scared. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I love. I love the effect when they get hit by the disc and they just go to that beam of light. That was also another thing I was a bit disappointed with the sequel. That Tron was just a a bodyguard under. Clues, yes, um, control, and then he just goes, I fight for the users, yes, yep, and then right at the last minute, and then he just gets defeated. Like, no, I want to see Tron do his, do his stuff. Um, you get you know. like two seconds of it in a flashback, don't you? Yeah, that's right, because he's now got two discs or something. But... How have they got skulls? That seems odd. Oh, did it have a flash frame? They have like a skull, yeah. All oh, right, would they have skulls? That's no, oh. well, I mean, should be a bunch of numbers, the numbers, zeros and ones, yeah, yeah. That's a... <laughs> a presence I've not felt since. That's some good sound design in this, actually. They haven't, you know, done the. From what I, I don't hear any sort of familiar sound effects. Like they're just kind of recycled from other movies. No, know. it's got a distinctive sound to it, isn't it? Mm. Real heavy hits as well. It's not like um, the old British way. 
And if it was like mixed at Pinewood, you get the same explosion and <laughs> gun sound effects, you know. Yeah, every James Bond film. Yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like watching, you know, when you watch Tim Burton's Batman, there's all sound effects from like Bond, Superman, and the old like World War Two, you know, epics from the 50s. You know? We've only got three vinyl records for all our bloody sound effects. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is quite cool. It actually takes his. Look at that. Cut through it and cut through his head. Look at that. That is cool. It's his brains look. Look. Oh! Yeah. Wow, I don't remember that. Good lord. It's like pick a mix, look. Yeah, <laughs> he's a pinata. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this, this, it's just like a video game now, isn't it? So, yeah. You've got to break down the shield. This makes perfect sense. So, oh, yeah. I swear I played a game like this before, not Tron, where you've got to break down the shields like that. What, what is game was that? All me lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much like every shmup. Yeah. You've got to break down the shield, don't you? Like yeah. It's a big spaceship what coming <laughs> somehow he lives but now he walks slower oh he's getting bigger <laughs> come here you so what have we learned today if you Cut open Sark's head, he gets really big. <laughs> He's come from like a 7 inch to 14 inch necker. <laughs> sort of figure, isn't he? Big so, one. And a three and a quarter, uh, three and a half inch disc to five and a quarter. Yeah. Oh, he's got to jump in, doesn't he? He's yeah. to send... Um, Whee! To, was it to cancel everything out, I suppose? See, Tron looks there, looks a bit... Well, Tron, well, the clue looks a bit unfinished there, didn't he? Like, yeah. It's just a white figure. <laughs> Something's happening. And he's going to free up the space to throw the disc. Ooh! Tiny CGI Tiny. Flynn flies back up. <laughs> yeah. And he gets sent back to the real world. Mm. See, see, it's an old geezer, look. It's kind of quite it's quite interesting. It's like some sort of Hellraiser thing. He's got that old oh, yeah. typewriter. I yeah. don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> He's just disgusted by it. Oh, go, go, away go, now. Go, back, go back in my hole. <laughs> yeah. That would be something to explore, I think. You know, who who was Master Control, you know? I should have maybe showed a hint of that in, in the sequel. Yeah, have done. was it some sort of um, really old programmer who'd retired or something? Mm. Yeah. Because we've got a visual representation of um, you know, Warner's character, haven't we? We don't have one for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to slowly get down this <laughs> uh, ramp. Well, that's broken. <laughs> Ten. If evil equals existent, <laughs> then make good. Twenty. Go to ten. There we are. <laughs> That's that sort of weird sort of like seventies album. From, isn't yes, it? yes, yeah, like, like yes, yes album cover. Yeah, yeah. It is, isn't it? Rick Wakeman's there. I think. <laughs> this is like the music here is very Disney esque. Oh man, it really is, isn't it? Yeah. I've never been kissed before. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> he got ejected, you see. And now he's going to be rematerialized in the real world, except his liver is on the outside. <laughs> is it like at the end of Legacy, like the whole, the, whatever is remaining of this world is on a USB stick, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Something like, yeah. Is it so small by today's standards? <laughs> is this the footage from earlier played backwards? I think so. Yeah, I certainly would yeah, have done that to save money. Yeah, there's a of it, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, it's, it's a bit different. Hmm. 
But the orange never came back. <laughs> yeah, it's in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's to have surgery to have an orange removed from like his left well, ventricle it's, or something. It's completely full inside of him. Yeah. I'm going to pass this through. It's like... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> End of line. I don't, did they ever use that in anything? Like end of line as a sort of communication it's thing? EOL, yeah. Yeah, kind of. You, you yeah. wouldn't generally spell it out. <laughs> it doesn't seem to have had much an effect on Flynn being in weird computer world for ages <laughs> and nearly being killed constantly. <laughs> He just come through like, oh, I'm starving. What's happened? Where am I? <laughs> if we, you come out definitely with a migraine. Definitely. Yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah. Your vision's all screwed up. Oh, dear. Uh, Would he be demoted or fired? Probably fired, maybe. I don't know. Who's his boss? Yeah. It's never really established, is no. it? No. The shareholders, maybe? Yeah. Or is Airwolf? Everything's going to be okay. Doom, diddly, doom, diddly, doom. <laughs> Oh, I hate those hairy jumpers. That was that was a bad time. Eighties hairy oh, jumpers. Yeah. It's great. He's now head of the company now, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, progress. Like <laughs> we want about. <laughs> we want Intron. <laughs> <laughs> then how did you know look we've read the script that's a great transition as well because it ends up looking like, um, like yeah, computer programming that's really nice like a, like a computer board isn't it which is how the sequel opens isn't it that sort of city face yes into the thing. Such a enough, great yeah. opener that was oh that was a, a surprisingly it's quite sh- the, I thought, the end credits yeah. are quite short I think they not everyone back then would get credited for certain roles it's all condensed into like this one company you know doing certain things but yeah I, you know what do you think Stuart yeah I've seen it for a long time yeah I mean it's still fun and looks amazing constantly and it's always it's surprising you with a new visual which is nice but yeah there's not much to it narrative wise no no and there's some characterization there which is good mm. um more than I remembered actually but yeah it's one of those things it feels slightly like a missed opportunity like a lot of work went into it but perhaps more work should have went into the script beforehand do you know what I mean it's a first-time director, and I think doing that sort of it's a common trait with first-time directors. Um, I, I think he's a talented guy who's got a great concept, an idea yeah. Yeah. that 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 would work as a short, but not as a feature. It has that feeling it of something done by problem. somebody who's very good with visual stuff, mm. but had, lacks the experience and the mm. narrative. Maybe don't know. Mm. Don't know. Maybe I'm saying that with hindsight, but yeah. Maybe so, maybe so. I mean, that's, that's also a similar problem that Legacy has, isn't it? Where it kind of runs out of story a little yeah. bit. Um, but, you know, both films, I mean, despite them both having sort of problematic issues with their stories and narrative, they're still, you know, great to watch. I'd, 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 never, I'd never write them off at all as something I wouldn't recommend. I'd always recommend this to people. You've got, you've got to see you've got to see Tron. Yeah. Just for, just for the experience of, you know, the visuals and music and... And performances yeah. are very good. Um, it's just, yeah, which uh, must have been bloody hard at the time. There was no real precedent for this kind of uh, blue screen stuff, was no, there? So. No, no, not at all. No. Good work all round, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the music now, this is, yeah. the music at the end is a bit weird. It's like a funeral. Oh, God, it is a bit. It's a big it? church organ, you know. That is an odd choice, isn't it? They've got no precedent in the film whatsoever. <laughs> what? These people are in the film. <laughs> They're Sad dead times. Yet. Yeah, dead. Yeah. You know. Blimey. But yeah, it's so so nearly something great, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it yeah. never quite reaches it. I think it's it maybe needed some sort of overseeing eye to say, look, okay, you need this little bit here. You need some. Mm. The script needs another pass at it. This you is know. that thing people don't understand about the film industry with well, all those meddling producers. And, like, yeah, there are arsehole meddling producers, absolutely, especially with the big films that can spoil things. But also, especially for smaller films, there are producers that kind of step in and go, yeah, actually, tone that down a bit because mm. you're going to spoil this, that, and the other, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like the fact that they've um, actually credited people in Taiwanese. 
Yes, that's right. And now we've oh, got, it's got music by Journey. Journey, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, yeah. Which is kind of, I think it popped up near the beginning at the arcade, I think. Um, uh, but Johnny obviously comes back for the sequel, doesn't it? When he walks into the arcade. Yes. Which is a fucking amazing song. Yeah. Love that song. Um, Mag- Magi yeah, yeah, synthesis. Synth of it, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, the, that's not a phrase you see for the Magic Dragon every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if it actually says at the end so you can play the game on Atari or, um, or read, <laughs> Available now read the, the novel by um, what's that Alan Dean Foster. <laughs> yeah, Alan Dean it's Foster. always Alan Dean Foster. Yeah, yeah. God, he must get sick of doing these things. It, everything was him for years, wasn't it? I think he did the Alien Covenant one. I think I, I didn't. I, I read that book thinking, oh, it might be something, might be a better sort of redo of the movie because sometimes they sort of improve upon some elements in the books. Um, yeah. Like when I read the Superman three one, it had like far more backstory for Richard Pryor's character. I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Um, but yeah, Covenant didn't really <laughs> expand upon much. It's like, oh, it's still a bit, uh, bit of a misfire. So he's still writing these novels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness, yeah, yeah. I mean, he did Crawl for crying out loud. God, he's yeah. still going. I think he did like some of the Star Trek ones as well. Bloody I think. Hell. I remember reading the Terminator two novelization, but I can't remember who. Um, for that Jonathan somebody, I think. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, everyone, that's the end of the commentary. Hope you enjoyed it. Me and Stuart will be back with some more very soon. Take care, everyone, and goodbye. Goodbye.